Hi, my name is Bushy van Eck from South Africa and welcome back to another episode of my theory. Our main objective is to get to understand the human mind and the realities of our existence. At the end of the day, we will strive to see how much substance we can add about the human mind. We will eventually cover everything, some earlier than others. Um, in every episode, I'd just like to give a small bit of in information about myself. Uh, I haven't finished high school for very valid reasons. Since I was a child, I've been back and harassed by my teachers and everybody else about my handwriting. Homework would be thrown in front of me by the teachers, even exams, and tell me we're not marking this. It's, it's a work of a pig. Go and rewrite it. Uh, but I've learned to cope with that doesn't bother me. Everything I've learned is through self-education. What I like about teaching yourself about things is that in the educational system you can only learn what they enforce you to do. If you don't learn and answer what they want to hear, you won't get marks and you won't pass. As for myself, I could read something if I didn't like it. I'll discard of it. If I liked it, I'll make it my own. I would start sorting it out. In that way, I could put things together in a different way, discovering what I wanted to do, and that's why I came up with my theory. Um, now the question might be, what justify myself talking about the human mind? After all, I'm not a psychologist, a neurologist, or any educated person. But then I would like to mention that there is very few professors that has the same IQ level that I have. So either you can listen to a lot of people or you can entertain my theory. So at the end of the day it's for you to decide whether it's got any substance. Thank you. Now I would like, before we can go into the human brain, about brain size that we mentioned earlier on. Why brain size is so important in relation to magnifying glass being so important. But to really understand that concept, uh, we got to get to understand time uh, in a little better way. Earlier on I mentioned something about Einstein's theory of relativity where it's 100% correct but it couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, I just want to clarify something there. If you take for example and you say 2 and 3 equals 5 and you say 1 plus 2 plus 2 equals 5. The end result is the same. But there is a big difference. Adding 2 and 3 to get 5 and adding 1 plus 2 plus 2 to get 5 will give you the same result. But there is a big difference in how you obtain that information. Um, that's all I want to say about Einstein's theory of relativity for now. His theory of relativity certainly ends up there. And the theory on the relativity will also end up there. But there's a major difference in how we accomplish the end result. But for now, let's uh, quickly uh, look at that. Sooner than later, I will also talk about the Fibonacci sequence, where 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 and 5 is 8, 5 and 8 is 13, and so on. By doing that, you will certainly get an X figure in a Fibonacci sequence, which is correct. But again, the way it's accomplished is also very far from the truth. 
but that I will only reveal at the later stage in one of my other videos which will certainly make sense and then you will get to discover of who is your real father if you think your father is your father then think again or you, your mother and your father is your parents think again you're wrong but we'll go into that later on if we look at time once more time being sequential going from moment to moment where you can't go back and you can't go forward in time except through the human mind through consciousness let's start off with a Planck distance where we start off expanding time is not really important I've just decided we can go to the lowest level known to man at this moment to be the Planck level although it's not been proved to exist so if we look at the Planck distance one unit of distance we can also call it one unit of consciousness so what does a unit of consciousness entail if this was to be one unit of consciousness it can only exist once a cycle has been um, once we have completed the cycle any time the cycle is open the moment does not exist the cycle needs to be completed I'd like to call this the capacitance of time so like I said good and bad up and down in and out all the opposites once it starts out going around completing the cycle only once the cycle has been completed then does a unit or a moment of consciousness exist now let's take it to the other extreme this is now at the micro level the lowest level of existence if we take it to the other extreme encapsulating the totality of the universe let's forget about expansion or anything like that let's assume that the size of the universe the known universe is stationary it's not expanding or anything then the totality of the universe is also one conscious moment this is very important to understand it might seem unbelievable or like a lot of crap or something don't matter but once like I said once you get to understand the total theory all of this will fit together which will make totally sense and like I said nobody will be able to disprove it in any way or form so please bear with me for now maybe you can just accept some of these things in good faith but on condition that it will be proven later on or that it will become self-realization so let's get back to the Planck moment again if you look at the speed of light being 299,000 blah 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 sec uh, kilometers per second let's work on a speed of light of 300,000 kilometers per second which is 186,000 miles per second so if we look at 300,000 kilometers in a second now if you take a Planck distance it will be so small I won't have enough space here to put in all the zeros to conceptualize it but let's assume that a photon was small enough to circumvent a Planck moment of consciousness then once the photon has revolved around at one time it will entail one unit of consciousness but this unit of consciousness would be meaningless it would mean nothing nada so at that level going through the duration of the universe 
it starts off there, going right around. It's so small, going around. When it gets to the other side, nothing would have been achieved. Nada. So, we'll get to this just now. So now if we unify two moments of consciousness at plank level, now we've got two plank moments and tiling. Remember again, like I said, the cycle got to be completed, the loop got to be closed. It's only once the loop is closed that a conscious moment becomes aware of the existence. Now if we talk in computer terms, uh, that's the easiest way to explain it. We're definitely not computers or anything. Like certain theories suggest that we are uh, computer programmed and that's why we experience our realities. That's a lot of crap. To explain consciousness, the one unit can consist of a, of a one and a zero the next one. So when you only had either an on or an off here, now you can have an on and an on, an off and an off, on, off, off, on. So that would give you basically four combinations. So already we've now got four combinations. So each moment of this would consist of four possibilities. Now, listen very carefully now. If at a very small one, the speed of uh, this duration of closing the loop, which is like a, a billion for a trillion for a trillion for a second, it's not important how small it is. You must just realize it's very small. If this takes a trillion of a second to complete, then at a speed of light, being so far the circumference of the universe, for a speed of light to circumvent the universe would take billions and billions of years. So, if this was a moment of consciousness going around, it would perceive the universe to be lasting for billions and billions of years. Now let's put some figures to it. But just the figures so we can get a better understanding. If we want to work on very specific figures, then we'll have to become quantum physicists and, and scientists and all that. We don't need to do that. There's no need for this. This is a theory that anybody can understand, whether you sweep the floors or whether you're a scientist. doesn't matter. This is here for everybody, for every mortal on this planet, planet to be able to understand. Let's say that the beginning to the end of the universe, one circumvention, consists of 100,000 moments. Remember, this is a moment. Once the loop is completed, it's one completed unit of consciousness or one moment. Now, something very important to understand. Once one completion of the universe lasting for billions of years is completed, only then is the loop completed. And that is also one moment of consciousness. One moment of consciousness lasting a trillion for a trillion for a second. One moment of consciousness lasting for billions and billions of years. Now the most important thing to understand here, and for now, you need to believe it out of good faith. But like I said, eventually it will become self-explanatory and it will become self-evident once you get to know everything, the totality of this theory. The duration of a plank moment of consciousness and the duration of the totality of the duration of the universe is perceived to be of the same duration. I repeat, the duration of one Planck moment and the duration of the totality of the universe is perceived to be of the same duration. So, let's get a better understanding. 
If I show you a picture with one dot on it, if I take this, and this is a picture now, and I make a mark on it here, if we look at this with one mark on it, and I flash it in front of you, let's say it takes a duration of a tenth of a second, you've perceived this, and I take all the substance, everything that has ever occurred, every moment, every thought, every idea of the totality of the universe, and in some way I can put it on here, and I flash it in a tenth of a second, that uh, the duration would be the same. The only important difference is the substance of the moment. This is meaningless. Nothing. Nada. Over here, it's got a lot of substance, having a lot of meaning. But like I said, the loop got to be closed for you to understand this. Of course, this is out of the scope of the human mind. We're not capable of understanding this. We're not even capable of understanding this at a plant level. Why? Because we exist somewhere in between. If this is the smallest unit, the micro, and this is the biggest unit of time, or, or, or rather the, the macro, then as humans we live somewhere in between. If you go to the levels of 10 to the 1 to the power, 10 to the power, 20 to the power, 30, etc., until you get to the micro level, or 10, 1 to the power, 10 to the power, 20 to the power, etc., reaching the outskirts of the universe. We are more or less in between. This is what I like to call the scope of opportunity. When you hear, you can't experience most of that, the micro, and you Neither can you experience any of the macro. You can only perceive somewhere in between the scope of opportunity. Now, in the scope of opportunity, we'll cover this a bit later on. Let's leave it at that for now. If we take this, like I said, and we double it up, now suddenly you've got four options on, on, off, off, on, off, off, on, and so on, giving you four different options. With the universe lasting for a hundred thousand moments, remember what I said, we're just using this as a plain example for everybody to be capable of understanding it. At the plant level, one conscious moment will take a hundred thousand of those from moment to moment, perceiving it as uh, one unit of consciousness or one moment of awareness going on, 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 on for a hundred thousand moments then it ends to the end where everything ends being meaningless nothing happened, zilch there's no point in the universe so now we got two with uh, four options now suddenly with two unified moments of consciousness it will go it will this two together is also one unit of awareness or one unit of consciousness or one moment consisting of more substance. But that double up or a single or the totality of the universe, all of it will be perceived to be lasting for us of the same duration. The difference now, the big difference is that at the next level now, the universe, if this goes around, uh, double steps, not single steps like that, double steps, the universe would now be, be perceived to be lasting for 50,000 moments of consciousness of duration. 50,000. So, from the perspective of the plant level and the perspective of the unification of two plant levels, at that level the universe would be perceived to be lasting for 100,000 moments or for a duration of a hundred thousand whatever you want to call it but from that perspective the universe is now only lasting for fifty thousand moments so it's already half the time then you go on let's take it one further 
we go and we encapture like four moments. So the substance now won't be four, but it will now suddenly be 16 options if my calculations are correct. It's not important whether I'm correct or not, but let's work on 16. Suddenly uh, now your scope has become 16 times more by only f combining four units of consciousness compared to the one. Now you've got 16 different experiences. Now if you take four divided by 100,000, now the universe would be perceived to be lasting only 25,000 moments. So that is only a quarter of what we perceive at this level. Now, what is the speed of light being 300,000 kilometers per second? At a Planck level, if this level of consciousness was capable, which it's not, if it was capable of perceiving the speed of light, the speed of light would be moving slow with the universe lasting for a very long time. Now, at the next level, the speed of light would be perceived. It's got four times the intelligence that it had on that level, but the speed of light would be perceived to be moving twice as fast. Take note of this, twice as fast. If we go to the fourth level, the four unified moments of consciousness, now we've got an intelligent level of 16 bits. We're out of 16 bits. The very first computers only worked on 8 bits. Now, we're already on 16 bits there. So that's a hell of a lot of data at that level to conceptualize, to make sense of. But it will only last a quarter of the duration of the universe. But the speed of light will now be moving four times as fast. So at the first level, it was moving at this speed. The second one going a bit faster. Now at that one, the speed of light would be going like that, much faster. So, eventually when we get to the level of our conscious awareness, our perceived realities, let's forget about the subconscious level, let's work on your perceived realities. At that level, the speed of light is traveling at 300,000 kilometers per second. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the more we unify consciousness, only through the unification of consciousness can we become more intelligent, more intelligible. So by adding up, up our scope is becoming much bigger, our awareness, our substance of the moment is becoming much uh, we got much more substance in a moment of understanding. But the more we get to understand, the faster the speed of light will go. So, if you have to go to the other extreme, which humans can't, the realities of a human can never be there, and it can never be there. Only, uh, we'll get to this later, I don't want to go into that now, I don't want to chase people away. But, and that's reality. We're at the second, the, the speed of light is moving at, at this moment of reality, the speed of light is perceived to be moving right around the universe in one moment, in one thought, in one action. So, this is like the big bang from a conscious moment of perception. This is like the big bang. The beginning to the end is like a flash. The next one big bang from the beginning to end is like a flash, like a flash, like a flash. <coughs> and with this simple theory, I will prove to you eventually that there is no such a thing as a big bang. The universe in actual fact is a continued flow of perpetual motion. What comes in here goes out there. So, with other words, the totality of the universe, everything is moving to the center, goes out and re-enters, gets in, goes out and re-enters. It's actually 
Uh, Nasim Ara Main. It's got a very good theory of the Aras I can't remember what you call it. <coughs> it's not important, but uh, we can go into that later on. But that is basically uh, what consciousness is about. <coughs> uh, I think uh, we will cut it for now. Again, like I said, if you like what you hear, pass it on, especially to scientists and neurologists. And then, uh, thanks for watching. In the next episode, uh, we will expand a bit further on this. And then, this is also where I will then explain the importance of brain size. Thank you.